Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. We have a new addition to the set today, which I can't really show you because it's behind the camera, but thanks to the AdSense money that I've made for my videos, I now have a ring light. Ooh, fancy. Which is really nice to have because it means that I don't have to depend on the weather outside <laughs> to film videos <laughs> so that my lighting doesn't put me like half in shadow. Today's video is going to be a deviation from my regular archaeological content. I've been thinking about making this video for a while and since June is actually Migraine and Headache Awareness Month, I thought that now would be an appropriate time to do so. Before I even get into it, I want to be clear that me putting up this video is not me asking for people's medical opinions and is not meant to provide any kind of medical advice or guidance to anyone watching. The intent is more to provide awareness of the symptoms of a migraine and to, and to help you recognize the symptoms and that it is time to go seek help from a medical professional. Please do not base your medical decisions for yourself upon what I have done slash did and do not ask me in the comments you know, I'm having this situation, what should I do, etc. My only response to those kinds of comments will be go see a doctor because I am not qualified to answer those questions for you. So migraines, what are they? Chances are that you either know someone who has them or you've had them yourself. Usually I think people would describe migraines as a severe headache that can often incapacitate people. It actually does qualify as a disability because they are so bad that you cannot really work through them. According to Wikipedia, migraines typically affect one side or one part of your head and they are pulsating in nature and they can last from a couple hours to a couple days. They also sometimes have additional symptoms like nausea, vomiting, and sensitivities to light, sound, or smell. We don't exactly know what causes them to happen to some people and, and, and not others, but people are fairly confident that it's something to do with things like your environment and stress, as well as genetic factors. Changing levels and hormones also seems to play a part in giving people migraines, as women tend to be affected two to three times more than men. And our hormone levels, as some of you may know, tend to go up and down a bit more. The underlying mechanisms of migraines aren't fully known, but we do know that it is involving the nerves and blood vessels within your brain. Across the world, about 15% of people suffer from migraines, and it is suffer. My two archaeological facts that I'm going to squeeze into this video is that our earliest description of migraine-like symptoms comes from ancient Egypt written in a papyrus that was written around 1500 BC, so around 3500 years ago. The word migraine comes from the Greek word hemicrania. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, which translates to pain in half of the head, so very descriptive. So now that we kind of know what migraines are, how does this all apply to me personally? Let's time travel back to Easter 2017. I was working in Lincoln in England where I was provided with 24-7 accommodation for work but my life itself was still very much based in Edinburgh. My partner was there and I was still paying rent for a flat up there. I was just working down south for a period of time. After the long weekend for Easter I had come down with a cold which took me out for about two days. On the day that I was coming back to work, I was feeling much better, obviously. And I vividly remember as we were driving to a site at 6.30 in the morning, that we were driving into the sun and all of a sudden I got what I would call like a sunspot, but it's also known as like an eye floater in my eye. And so because we were driving into the sun, it wasn't exactly that unusual. So I like tried closing my eyes and stuff like that and like blinking a couple times to get rid of it, but it wouldn't go away. I remember thinking like, that's kind of weird, but I just dismissed it, ignored it, and eventually it went away. I got to work and I started my day digging and shortly afterwards I got this killer headache right behind one of my eyes. I can't exactly remember which, I think it was this one. It kind of felt almost like a headache that you get during a sinus infection where there's this like intense pressure in your head, except it wasn't just like when I looked down, but it was definitely worse than any of the headaches I've had when I've had sinus infections. It was, and I would have categorized it at the time as like the worst headache I had. It definitely slowed me down, but because I had just come off of sick leave, I did, wasn't really eager to take more sick days, and I thought it was just maybe left over from that, so I just kept working. After like an hour or two, I think it went away, and then around one of our breaks, I was chatting to my coworkers, and I was saying, oh yeah, I got this really bad headache today, 
day and I was describing it and one of my coworkers said, oh, you just had a migraine. And I was like, what? I've never had one of those before. How can I just like suddenly have a migraine? I also learned that the sunspot that I had seen in my eye while on the drive-in was actually an aura, which is a period of visual disturbance that like warns you that you're about to get a migraine. <laughs> and about a third of the people that suffer from migraines get these. The coworker who alerted me to the fact that I had a migraine was somebody who regularly got migraines and so he was just kind of saying oh yeah like people get them and nobody really knows why or what causes them etc it was a very like casual response not a like oh that's that's wrong you need to go see a doctor immediately later that evening i also spoke to my partner who when i told him about it had a very similar response saying you know you know oh it's just a migraine like he had a migraine years ago that I think actually incapacitated him for a day and then never had one again. We had a friend who had a migraine that was so bad. One time he got like sent for an MRI or something like that. This kind of like response that I got to me didn't signal that this was a um, medical situation that I immediately needed to deal with. Additionally, I hadn't registered at a GP or doctor in Lincoln when I'd kind of moved there for work. I still had a doctor up in Edinburgh who obviously doesn't work on the weekends, which was when I was usually visiting Edinburgh. And I wasn't keen to waste like an evening going to like a hospital or a walk-in clinic in Lincoln to just be told that like, oh yeah, you had a migraine. There's nothing we can really do. This was a hundred percent not the right thing to do and a bad idea. <laughs> do not brush it off like I did. If you suddenly have a migraine out of nowhere or you start having migraines, go see a doctor immediately. <laughs> After I decided like, oh yeah, this isn't really something I need to bother with, I proceeded with my life. I had a migraine in May, another one in June, so they seemed to be doing like a bit of a monthly pattern. Then I went three months without any at all, and then I got two in October, about two weeks apart. Very much remember one of them because it took me out when I was in the midst of cooking my Canadian Thanksgiving dinner that I was gonna serve to some friends that evening, which was very inconvenient because I couldn't just like stop cooking. But thankfully it went away before my dinner was served and so everything turned out okay. <laughs> Every time I had a migraine, I had an aura precede it, which was very helpful retrospectively because it kind of gave me enough time to realize what was happening, like pack up at work, like tell my boss I was going home sick and usually gave me enough time to go home. My way of dealing with them was very typical for a lot of people. I would go home and go into a dark room and attempt to sleep for a couple hours, which usually got rid of it. I might have taken like ibuprofen or like paracetamol or like a minor headache medication, but I don't really remember. But typically, I think on the scale of migraines, mine were pretty minor. The later on episodes when I started having more of them, I did start getting nausea, but I never got the vomiting, which is good. And while I was somewhat sensitive to light, it wasn't like as bad as I've heard it being for other people. So I had two migraines in October, I had two migraines in November, and then in very early December, I had three within the space of one week. At this point, I was living back in Edinburgh full time. I wasn't in Lincoln anymore. And this increase in the amount of migraines I was getting basically gave me the kick up the butt to make an appointment to speak to my doctor. I think that I would have called my doctor on a Tuesday after I had the third migraine and I got an appointment for the Thursday. And then shit hit the proverbial fan. <laughs> Excuse my French. So I will admit that I am a bit of a worrier and in between when I made my doctor's appointment and when I actually had the appointment, I made the carnal mistake of looking up my symptoms on the internet. <laughs> Specifically like an increase or a change in the pattern of how often you get migraines. Do not do this. Do not do what I did. Instead, speak to an actual medical professional. Don't look stuff up on the internet. It's never helpful. I don't know what search term I put in exactly, but what I basically got back was a bunch of pages talking about the connection between migraines and strokes. So basically from reading that stuff, 
I got it into my head that this increase in the amount of migraines I was getting that was my body telling me that I was like about to have a stroke, which was terrifying, especially since at that point in time, I had absolutely no idea what was triggering them. Like I said, they'd gone on and off and there wasn't like any specific thing that I could pinpoint that had caused them to ha start happening. I did have a family history of migraines. My grandmother got them, but my mom doesn't but that itself was like quite tenuous and it just didn't make sense to me that I would start getting them at like 28, 29 when I had never had them before previously in my life. Fast forward to Wednesday evening. Fast forward to Wednesday evening, so like the night before my doctor's appointment, my partner and I were driving to the grocery store to do our weekly shop. On the way there, I got an aura, which based on my bad internet search, <laughs> put me into a full on, panic attack, which I, I'd never had before in my life. This was the fourth one that I'd had in a week. And so I just convinced myself basically that like I was about to have a stroke. So while my partner was driving, I was on the phone with like the NHS. I don't know if I called like the emergency hotline or like the 24 hour medical hotline. There are two different things, but I was speaking to an operator on the phone who was asking me about my symptoms while we were in the car. And that's when my panic attack made it so that I started having trouble speaking. So like she was asking me stuff and I just like couldn't get the words out. I couldn't even really think of them. I couldn't say them. I was stuttering when I was trying to put words out. So again, this only like reinforced to me the idea that I was like having a stroke because speech problems are one of the classic signs of someone having a stroke. The operator basically said, okay, you need to go to a hospital just to make sure that you're okay. There's no point in sending an ambulance because you're already in a car, drive to the nearest hospital. So my partner put it into gear, drove us. He himself was quite scared as well, but he did very well under pressure. Um, <clears throat> once we got to the emergency room, we registered and spoke to some staff and I described what was going on. I think the lady, the operator had like called ahead to warn them that I was coming. But I think when I got to the emergency room, it became clear probably quite quickly that I wasn't actually having a stroke. I walked in under my own power, like, you know, I didn't have half of my body just like peace out. I was able to speak a bit more and the longer I was there, the more and the more that like I calmed down, the better I got. Despite this, they did check me out anyway and did like a bunch of like heart rate tests and all this kind of stuff. We were there for a couple hours, which kind of reassured me that I wasn't Im imminently about to have a stroke. So like, yay for publicly funded healthcare. <laughs> Getting to the hospital kind of reassured me that even if I was having a stroke, I was going, I was somewhere where I could get taken care of and like not die. So I calmed down, which meant that all of my tests came back fine and the hospital sent me home, but said obviously like keep your appointment with your doctor the next day to talk about a bit more in depth. The next day I went to my appointment with my GP. I gave her the full story, including what had happened the night before. And the first thing that she asked me after I finished was what kind of birth control you were on which at the time was the dual hormone pill called seasonal, which is estrogen and progesterone. And you take it so that you only get your period four times a year, like on a quarterly basis rather than a monthly basis. And I had been on it since I was like 19. So almost like a decade by that point. When I told her this, she said to immediately stop taking my pill. As those of you who have, who have taken the pill, you will know that one of the potential side effects is an increased risk of strokes and blood clots. And as we said at the beginning, hormones and changing hormone level levels are one of the things that could potentially cause migraines. So yeah, so she told me to immediately stop taking my pill. And she also gave me a prescription for medication that I could take when I started getting an aura, which if I took it in time, should either make it so the migraine didn't happen at all or that it was like drastically reduced from how bad it could be. So going out of that appointment, I, I did what she said. I got my medication. I stopped my pill and my migraine stopped. A week later, I started the mini pill, which is a single hormone birth control. Uh, it only uses progesterone, not estrogen. And now I actually have the single hormone implant in my uh, bicep, which uh, means I don't have to like take a pill or anything, which it's completely separate, but like highly, highly recommend that. I had one like kind of residual migraine about a month later in January, but since then I haven't had a single migraine. So that's about four years. This would make it seem that the thing that was triggering my migraines was my birth control, which is 
something that is a bit weird because like I said I've been on that for a, quite a long time and somehow it just like suddenly changed and it didn't like me anymore. <laughs> I'm incredibly grateful that my migraines are stopped and I, I dread the day that I may or may not ever get them again. I can't describe how deflating and defeating it felt when I got that residual migraine in January because to me that was like oh no. We got rid of one trigger but they're not completely gone but luckily since then I've been okay I wouldn't necessarily wish a migraine on anybody but having them definitely gave me a new appreciation and respect for people who do suffer from like chronic migraines I've heard people dismiss them as like they're just like oh they're just a bad headache like what's the big deal you know you're making um, a big deal out of nothing which is not something anybody would say if they'd had a migraine. So the next time someone you know has a migraine, be sympathetic, not a skeptic. And if you ever have a migraine, go see your doctor sooner rather than later. <laughs> Don't be stupid like me and wait months. It's not entirely likely that if I had gone to see a doctor right away, I wouldn't have had anything beyond that first migraine. That's all folks. If you liked this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from me, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button down below so you get notified whenever I put out new videos. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns that are not asking me for medical advice, please put them down below. If you would like to take part in Migraine and Headache Awareness Month, I've also included a link in the description to like the official page which has like a bunch of observance days and information stuff on how you can participate. My Twitter and Instagram are also below if you'd like to follow me on there. I am trying to be better at posting on Instagram so that there is actually content there for you guys to see on a regular basis, but it's an, it's an uphill battle, I'll be frank. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Bye!